Hi guys, Ben again here, back on Chesil Beach. We've got some stunning weather, really hot today, 20 degrees or more, water's gin clear, lovely sunshine. As you all know, it's not the best conditions for catching fish, but it's around about four o'clock now. Uh, we're gonna have probably five or so hours of good strong tide. So I think realistically, we're looking at place today, chance of a gurnard or two. Apologies, it's been a little bit samey, uh, of late but uh, the ray fishing hasn't been as good as it normally is down in Dorset this June and unfortunately today was the only day I could really do a video and the tide for ray fishing would have stopped at around 9.30 and that golden hour over dusk where you do need a little bit of flow unfortunately we wouldn't have had so I've made the decision to come and fish for the smaller bits and pieces once again uh, so uh, apologies it will be another place video uh, hopefully we can get into some decent ones there's been one or two nice fish around um, on the way down the hill uh, I'm actually at Cogden as you probably realized but on the way down the hill I bumped into a guy who'd been here since 9 a.m this morning uh, and that was around 3 30 apparently he hadn't had a bite all day so I like a challenge uh, but it sounds like it could be a difficult afternoon but fingers crossed, I can come back to you with some nice fat place. So the main plan of attack today, bait wise, is gonna be these guys, if you can see. Uh, I've got some beautiful gutted black lug probably a couple of days old, but still nice and firm, got a great smell to them. Uh, we're really lucky actually in Weymouth, we've got four fantastic tackle shops in the area, West Bay Water Sports, Chesil Bait and Tackle, Weymouth Angling and Abbotsbury Tackle. And I like to dig as much of my own bait as I possibly can, but sometimes around work that can be tricky and those guys are always able to step in and help with some top quality bait. So big thanks to them and hopefully we'll put these to good use today. Okay, so rig wise today, guys, it's gonna be very similar to what we've done in similar conditions before. So distance is gonna be key. We're gonna go for two hook loop rigs once again. A Couple of differences today. We're very unlikely to run into a bonus fish like a hound or a ray. Uh, the conditions are so bright and hot, it's going to be pretty much all smaller fish, I think. So for that reason, I'd normally use the Varavas Aberdeen because they've got that extra strength to deal with a bonus fish. Uh, today, it's all about that ultimate bait presentation in this clear water. So I've gone for something lighter and finer wire. So the hook of choice today, if we can see this, is a Cedra Cone Point in a size 3 which is a lovely light sharp hook, perfect for small worm baits or even small crab baits. And the other interesting thing with these rigs is that normally I would use crimps. Today, there's been a lot of spider crabs over the last couple of weeks and I don't really want to empty my rig wallet of all my hard tied rigs. So I'm actually using power gum stop knots, uh, if you can see that there. And what that allows me to do is actually retie another hook should I lose one. And by sliding these up or down the line, it means that that snud will still fit into the bait clips and I can use it again. Now, for power casting, one little tip I would give you is on the top snud, you will need to double up on the stop knots. I use four turns on each one and I really snug them down. Uh, if you don't do that and you just use a single knot, what you'll find is that that snud will probably slip and come unclipped during the cast. So just a, um, a little tip if you are thinking about doing that. Uh, today, we're gonna have a modest run of tide, so no grip leads. I wanna search the ground. So we've cut the wires off 150 gram impact lead, and we're gonna cast that up tide and just allow it to roll down through and search out the bottom hopefully finding us a few place.
one thing I wanted to get across is when the fishing is slow on Chesil, I sometimes think people fish a little bit too quickly. And if you're using soft baits like ragworm, for example, realistically that's gonna last less than 10 minutes this time of year with the spider crabs, the little ghost crabs, the shrimps. Uh, so I tend to use more black lug this time of year. Um, and you don't need much of it, just to give you a little idea. Um, these are a couple of baits I'm about to cast out next. So it's literally just a half a medium black, which I know we've shown you before. But by leaving off things like ragworm, that will last far longer on the bottom. And I might be able to leave that 25, 30 minutes which just gives it that little bit of extra time to find a fish when the conditions are so bright and difficult like today. You're unlikely to get bites quickly. Uh, it's gonna be a, um, a bit of a, um, a slog. So anything you can do to keep your baits out there a little bit longer, I think will be an advantage. Well, it's good news because I've had probably 30 minutes of that rig out there and I've still got bait. So hopefully the spider crabs aren't too active today. So there we go, two small lug baits behind the plane lead. Let's pop it out. Okay, so a few people have asked me what tackle I use for fishing chesil. And for me at the moment, my current favorite multiplier rod is an Any Fish Anywhere Mark II Match Pro. I don't use the tournament version, just the standard. I find it's got more than enough power for putting out 150, 170 gram leads with two or three small baits. Um, equally, it's at home with a larger ray bait and a heavier lead if the conditions are bad. Uh, but it's a lovely rod that's easy to use, more than enough power, a lovely tip for spotting bites, even off small flatfish. Uh, so this is, uh, this is the rod here. I've had that since Christmas. I've got a pair of those, in fact, and that's my go-to rod now for fishing chesil. Okay, so following on from rods, my current reel of choice, and actually has been for the last 10 years or more on chesil, is the Daiwa 7HT Mag which is these little guys here. They're a little bit of a marmite reel amongst anglers. Some love them, some hate them. The reason some don't like them is they are known to be a little bit fragile, especially if you're winding in double shots of dogs or you're pulling through any sort of mixed ground. The pen fathom range will win all day long in terms of ruggedness and reliability. What I love about these guys is straight out of the box with very little tinkering. They're a fantastic casting reel. They're safe as houses. If I crack off with this, it's my fault. I've made a mistake. Um, for me, as long as you go gentle with them and don't abuse them, they are my favorite reel for fishing along chesil. This particular one is loaded with 0 0.30 Varavas Yellow Sport, which comes in at 12 pound. A lot of people would think that sounds quite light, but especially on days like today, that extra few meters that you can achieve by using a thinner line is definitely helpful. The other one I use quite often is Asso Ultracast in orange. I think that comes in at 0.30 for 14 pound breaking strain. And again, that's an excellent line. And I've had Blom raise over 20 pounds using both these lines. Um, congas to almost 35 pound in rough seas so I've got every confidence in using these low diameter lines so everybody will have different opinions on reels but that's currently my favorite for fishing chesil
there we go. It's a lot of surprise in these conditions, but then there has been a few bass around of late. Only a small fish, but the first objective was to catch something, and we've done that. Well, there we go. One desirable, not one not quite so desirable. But um, it's weird, it's been really quite quiet. And then just out of nothing, you get a double shot of a dog in a place. So it just pays to keep going in situations like this, I guess. But uh, not a bad little place. Lovely condition at the moment. Nice bright spots again. Been feeding well. As for this little guy, I don't know what he's doing here in gin clear water in 20 odd degrees, but there we go. It's a bit of action. There we go, small hound. Unfortunately, I've picked up my other line as well, but uh, there's a few fish there now, which is good to see. I didn't bring any crab today. Uh, that one has just picked up, I think, black lug. Tipped with a little tiny bit of squid. A lively little fella. But yeah. We'll get him slipped back and we'll sort out the mess on the other rod. So we've got a little bit of tide hanging on. Uh, we're getting more into the evening light now. So I've got three bits of black lug on one rod, still looking for the smaller fish. And I've swapped the worm baits for sand eel on the Tuak loop. So that's going to be going out next, uh, just in case there is a small light around. Um, I don't think there will be but it's worth a go so slightly smaller place uh, this one is 32 centimeters first one that came in as a double shot with a dog was 35 very fat fish though lovely orange spots and we are starting to get a few bites now There we go, little bonus, uh, small-eyed ray, female small-eyed ray, not massive, 
Uh, we can get some beautiful fish along here this time of year, kind of into double figures. Um, this one's a long way from that. Um, taken on a sand eel. It is getting to that time of the day where we can see some good ray fishing now. Um, fortunately for me today, uh, the tide's a little bit early, so the flow is just stopping now. Otherwise, I think going on into dusk, we could have seen a few of these and probably some bigger ones. But uh, we'll have to just be satisfied with a, with a small one, unless the last couple of chucks with that little trickle of tide still there can produce something better. So just on sunset now, uh, next cast, we're going out with sand eel on the bottom hook and then half a black lug in the middle, half a black lug on the top snood. So hedging our bet slightly between place and raise. Hopefully we'll see something else. Uh, these are 15 inch snoods, all clipped above the lead. And we'll get that one out there now. Another dogfish, not what we really wanted, but it's another bite, keeps us busy. Hopefully we'll manage some, well, at least one more decent fish. That's the plan. So unfortunately we've pretty much run out of tide now. It'd be great to have another hour across dusk, but realistically on chesel, once the tide's gone, the fish go with it. Uh, I am gonna put a couple of casts out more in hope than expectation because I'm here um, and if I do get anything else I'll come back to you. So it's starting to scrape the barrel a little bit now. Um, slack water, not only does the number of bites go down, but also the quality of fish as well. So uh, a little place, um, but another bite. So I can't complain. go not massive little female small eyed of five pound nine ounces uh, as i say we do get some lovely fish this time of year along chesel well into double figures this year the raying has been a lot more difficult especially on the small lights uh, but um the nice little bonus on the on the last cast uh, that took the bottom hook of a loop rig with a little sand eel and squid wrap um, to be fair gave quite a good account of herself for a, a modest fish but um, anyway we've not had a bad little day it's not been phenomenal but we've had I think what a couple of dogfish smooth downs three place uh, two small lights now um, I think that's about it but Jezel's been very tough this last couple of weeks so I think anything on the beach is considered a bonus at the moment and uh, hopefully in the next few weeks it'll pick up and these videos will get a little bit more exciting but thanks for watching and we'll see you soon <laughs>